page 59 in your teaching syllabus, the Holy Spirit reveals the future. And Jesus said that the Holy Spirit would, would, would speak the things that he hears from the Father. These messages from the Spirit include a revelation of the future. They included many things, but include a message of the future. Uh, we read in John 16 and 13, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you. Say guide. guide. Yeah, yeah. He will guide you into all truth. So we do have a guide. I, maybe some of us are not very conscious of our guide. We still have a guide that will guide you into all truth. He shall not speak of himself. Now, now these are areas that I'd like for us to meditate in. Why doesn't he speak of himself? You know, But Jesus said that he would not speak of himself. But whatsoever he shall hear, so that means that he have, has access to the, to the throne room in heaven and also has access to our hearts. Uh, that, that which he shall hear in the throne room in heaven, that he shall speak. When God says it ought to be done this way, he will come and say, God said this way. You know, and the Father said this way. And he will show you things to come. And, and that, is, that is the relationship of your present uh, lesson. If you'd underline that last clause there. He will show you things to come. And, and that is what we're speaking about. The revelation that the Holy Spirit can bring to us in this dispensation. Now, not only did he do it in the dispensation of, uh, of himself. We're now in the dispensation of the Holy Ghost, called the dispensation of grace. And, uh, but he did it in the Father's dispensation. Go back to Genesis. I'm always glad. In fact, I wish you'd read my book on Genesis. God gave me that. He, one day he told me, he said, did you know that half the history of man's in one book? And I wanted to go by the book, you know. I said, yeah, I'd like to know that. He says, well, it's in the Bible, the first book. Did you know that the, 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 the scope of Genesis is 3,000 years? He, he told me, he said, every major sin in the world today, it's in, it's in the book of Genesis. It's not in you. You name it, and it's in Genesis. Man, I said, hey, I better study that book. I ended up writing a whole book about it. I got so excited about the book of Genesis and what it means to us. It, has a, it is a tremendous revelation. And in chapter 41, verse 25, Joseph said to Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh is one. God has showed Pharaoh what he shall do. Behold, uh, there, there, there shall come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. There shall arise after them seven years of famine, and, and all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt, and the famine shall consume the land. Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this, as this is? A man in whom the Spirit of God is. And so here we find the revelation that God, that the Holy Spirit, planted in Joseph's heart, and reveal the future of Egypt. It's amazing that he said you're going to have seven years of tremendous prosperity. You're going to have seven years of drought. And you have no prosperity, no food. And says so you better build some barns and put some food in it or you'll all starve to death. And this was revealed through the power of the Holy Spirit to a man that loved God whose name was Joseph. Then we go from a, a person that was in jail. He, he was a slave. He was, an, he was a, a foreigner living in a foreign country, and yet God used him in Egypt. But here we come to a king in the world's first empire, the empire of Babylon, the golden head of all empires. The Holy Spirit revealed the future to Daniel in Daniel 5 and 12. For as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpretation of dreams, showing of hard sentences, dissolving of doubts, hey, that's good, dissolving of doubts, found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. He was to be called, and he wasn't present, and he showed him. And it was all through that spirit that he had within him, that the spirit that was in him brought this truth out of him. And so here was a man named Daniel. The, the spirit worked through him to reveal the future, things that would come to pass. Number three, and the same is true of Ezekiel. And Ezekiel 11 and 5, it says, The Spirit of the Lord fell upon Ezekiel and said unto him, Speak, thus saith the Lord, thus have ye said, O house of Israel, for I know the things that come into your mind, every one of them. Here was a, uh, a tremendous prophetical voice that was speaking unto Israel, but he was speaking to them, this prophecy unto them, by the Holy Spirit. And so we find in the Old Testament, the Spirit did come upon prophets, and they did prophesy, and they did tell Israel and anybody else what was going to come to pass, 
And that was a voice and work and promotion of the Holy Spirit himself. In number four, uh, King Saul prophesied by the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, it, here's another king. Of when he was in the company of the prophets. Uh, I, I could like to tell you something about that. Maybe I will in a minute. In 1 Samuel 10 and 10, And when they came thither to the, kill, to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met with him, and the Spirit of God came upon King Saul, and he prophesied among the prophets. Now, I'll tell you something very interesting, and, and mark it down so you, won't, so you won't ever forget it. Now, uh, men like Oral Roberts will tell you that this is true. You let a, a man, you let a man come and be his personal helper, for a few months, and that man will be laying hands on the sick just like Brother Roberts does, and he'll be getting healed just like when Brother Roberts prays for them. Now, that, that's a very strong, very strange thing. Let that man leave him for a, a few months, and if he doesn't have his own, his own roots down deep in God, that anointing will leave him, and he can't pray for the sick anymore. Now, I went through what is called the healing, the healing age in this country, when there were maybe 50 healing evangelists on the road. Those healing evangelists in this country would, 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 lose their, would lose their campaign managers about once every three months. And they, they, go, they felt like they had the power, you see. And they ran off on their own. Now, some of them were successful, you know, and they demonstrated power. Because not only did they get into the other man's anointing, but they put their roots down and got it from the Holy Ghost himself, too, you see. And so they persisted. But those who, were, who, who got it only from the minister, they didn't keep it very long. They didn't keep it very long. Now, let me give you a personal illustration of this. Howard Carter and I started traveling around the world together, and he gave birth to the gifts of the Spirit. I mean, he was a man that first God gave them to, and he, he taught them and, and, and wrote down about them. And, and the, the, the first knowledge that we have in our times of the gifts of the Spirit supernaturally given through us was by Howard Carter. And uh, when we started traveling together, I was 20 years old. And when I was 21 years old, we, we were in, 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 in countries like Indonesia together. And one night he fell ill. He couldn't. He says, I, I just don't feel well inside. I can't go to church. And, and he says, the people are expecting to receive the Holy Ghost as a gift tonight. He says, you go out and give it to them. I said, ha, 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 ha. Say that again. He says, I've never done anything like that in my life. I'm an evangelist. He looked at me real stern. He said, do as I tell you to do. He said, you go. He says, there'll be three or four hundred of them. You stand up and say exactly what you've heard me say. And then you lay hands on them. He looked at me with a straight eye. He said, every one of them will instantly speak in tongues. I said, I laid hands on a lot of people. Nobody done it yet. He says, they will tonight. And I went out. And, and there was maybe 400 of these people. They'd come. It was a Holy Ghost meeting. I, I stood up and told them exactly what he, I'd heard it plenty of times. Exactly what he said. I repeated it like a parrot. And I says, all right. When I touch your head, speak in tongues. They all did. Yeah, they all did. But now, 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 now the difference is, as I travel with him, I put my roots down. Until whether I was with him or not with him, I could lay hands on people and they would receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. It's, it's all right to live close to one and drink at their fountain. But you better dig your own hole, get your own water, because if he ever moves away from you, you'll have a dry hole. And a lot of dry holes around. And, and, and uh, just be sure that whatever you have comes up from God. And then you can, it's always yours. Then, if it's borrowed, when he leaves, he'll leave with his own blessings. And you will not have it. King Saul was that way. He prophesied in the company of the prophets. He borrowed that blessing. And, and that's all he had it. He didn't have it anymore, any further. In fact, a bad spirit came in later because he, he, he wasn't a good man on the inside. Now, in 2 Samuel 21 and 3, it says, Now these be the last words of David. David, the son of Jesse, said, The man who was raised up on high, the anointed of God of Jacob, and the sweet psalmist of Israel said, The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. Now that, that's a good way to end your journey on the face of this earth. And you say, how would we know that was true? Read the whole book of Psalms. <laughs> Read the whole book of Psalms. And you will find that the Spirit of the Lord was upon him, and the Spirit was on, upon his tongue. But when you read the 23rd Psalm, you can't help but say the Spirit of the Lord was upon that man. He couldn't have said that if the Spirit of the Lord had not been upon him. So the Word was in his mouth. The Spirit, the, the Spirit of God revealed himself in, into this way into David. Now, in point number six, God wants to use everyone. 
Now, now this I am sure of. And I, I think I said it in another lesson. I'd like to say it again. And as you know, it's in Joel 2 and 28, but it's also in Acts, you know, in chapter 2, when, when, when Peter spoke it again. So the revelation of the future, of the dynamic movements of the Holy Spirit upon the face of this earth, uh, they are not to be for a particular group of people, like bishops and elders and all kinds of people with, with remarkable positions in the church. They're not to be for that. And the, the Bible says, It shall come to pass after that I pour out my spirit upon your, your sons and your daughters. That's male and female. Now, there are people today that get actually angry when God does anything for a female. I'd just like to tell you it's none of your business. If God wants to anoint a jackass, it's his business and none of yours. And for you to run around and say, Oh, you can't be blessed. You're a woman. It's none of your business what God does. You say, well, I don't like that. I, I, don't, I don't like that. Well, honey, what you like and what God does is two different things. And if God does it, whether you like it or not, don't make no difference. God taught me many years ago that Amos Simple McPherson from Los Angeles was a servant of his, and I had no right to say one word about whatever she did in the pulpit because he had anointed her to do it. And if God's anointed somebody to do it, you might as well keep quiet because he'll do it anyway. And he might do it so great until you have fallen into insignificance while he's doing it. And that's embarrassing. He said, your sons and your daughters, male and female, they should pray. He says, you're old and you're young. There's no generation gap. And, and in the Holy Ghost, there's no old and no young. Uh, they're all one in Christ Jesus. I've always said that if everybody was old in the church, it would dry up. And if we were all young, we'd blow up. But if we work together, we'll go up. And that's the best thing to do. It's, that's the best thing to do. Uh, age has nothing to do with the blessing and the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, get it while you're young and keep it all your life and stay young. It says, your old men, they shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. And so, even upon the servants, he says, servants, upon the handmaids, I will pour out of my spirit. You say, now what in the world does that mean, uh, Brother Sumrall? In Japan, uh, I was preaching in a, in, in a city and God was really moving in a beautiful way. And a very dignified man came up to me and said, I want to speak to you. I said, all right. He said, I'm a college professor. I said, all right. He said, I have a maid girl that came out here to this place. And said, she, she was ignorant when we got her out of the country till we had to teach her how to make up a bed. We, we had to teach her how to cook. We had to teach her even how to be clean. So she was so ignorant out of the country. And, and so she didn't know anything. And said, you know something? The other day she looked at me and said, you need to be born again, master. And I said, what do you mean getting born again? I'm already born. You can't do it twice. What do you mean? She said, yes, you can. You can be born of the Spirit of God. And that's different from being born in the flesh. And she you know, says, I couldn't answer her. And I'm a professor. She says, how did that stupid little girl that I had to teach her even how to shine a shoe try to tell me something I didn't know anything about? He was really concerned. And I said, sir, she told you what she had learned from the Holy Ghost in this place here. She, she, she was teaching you how the Spirit of God can teach a person. And they can tell it. They can tell it to others, even to a university professor. He said, well, not only, not only did it do that to me, but it made me feel so bad inside I wanted what she had. That's what you call conviction. And so it says here, upon your handmaids, upon your handmaids, those, those that are so, you know, so untrained, until you say, what in the world could they do? They don't know anything. Yeah, but the Holy Ghost can make them know something and know more than you know, you see. She just buffaloed him by telling him to be born again and, and, and to tell him she knew he could have a new spirit in him, a new power in him that would change his life. He didn't know anything about it. Never heard of it till a little maid girl from the country told him about it. God's going to use everybody is what we're trying to say. The power of the Holy Spirit is going to use everybody to do great things for him. I'm ready. Glory to God. Number seven, the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus is a spirit of prophecy. That's Revelation 19 and, and 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said, See thou doeth it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have, have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. There's a couple of truths I want to give to you there. You, 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 you wonder what the dead are doing right now? Some people say they're still in the earth. Well, just listen to what we read here in the Revelation. Uh, here John got so overwhelmed with the new Jerusalem and with all these mighty things that he saw, he got so overwhelmed with it, he fell down to worship him. Now, you're not supposed to worship angels. You're not supposed to worship saints. I mean, you got it right here in the Bible. 
And, and he said, uh, he said, don't do this. I am a fellow servant. Oh, that's somebody that's already dead. And he's out there working for Jesus now. He says, I am of your brethren. Hey, here he was showing people the new Jerusalem. I take that job myself. Yeah, I get in Here's Hallelujah Avenue. Here's Glory Street. Uh, yeah, the gold on the street here is two miles deep. Pure gold. You know, wouldn't that be a nice job? Well, he said he, he was a fellow servant. He was one of the brethren. Listen, he said, I have kept the testimony of Jesus. He hadn't even been dead very long. I kept the testimony of Jesus. He said, now listen, you're supposed to worship God. Not men, not angels. Worship God. Then he says... A, 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 a great piece of, uh, of truth here, and you might call it doctrine. He said the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. That when you witness under the holy anointing of the Lord Jesus Christ, that is the very energizing force of prophecy. And very often, under the anointing of God, you will speak prophetically, and you will not speak academically. Hey, that's great. You will actually speak prophetically and not speak academically. And we should all crave for that. I'm, I'm sure that all the great evangelists will tell you their times and they speak words of great strength that didn't come out of their minds, came up out of their spirits, anointed of the power of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit reveals things that are surely to come to pass. And your point number eight, the Holy Spirit reveals pertinent knowledge to the church. Revelation 2 and 7. He that hath ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Well, he hadn't stopped talking to churches. He, he likes to talk to you. You know, he's, he is interested in talking to you uh, right now. And, and the Spirit reveals, Paul knew his future through the Spirit. Acts 20, 22. Now, behold, I go bound in the Spirit under Jerusalem, not, not knowing the things that shall befall me, save that the Holy Ghost witnesses, witnesses in every city, saying that bonds... And afflictions abide me. So the Holy Ghost informed him of his future. You ought to listen to the Holy Ghost. You ought to listen to the Holy Ghost. Uh, I was in a meeting the last few weeks, and, and, and Kenneth Hagin was up ministering to the people on the power of God. And uh, he, he swung around right in front of me, and he said, uh, uh, Brother Sumrall, the only thing the Holy Spirit tells me about you, longevity, longevity, longevity. I said, good, I'll take it. The Holy Spirit witnessing, you see, our futures. He can do that. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. All right. And then chapter 21, verse 4. And finally, the disciples returned seven days who said to Paul through the, through the Spirit, through the Spirit, that he should not go up to Jerusalem. That is, if he didn't want to die. And when we... When he came unto us, Paul's, he took Paul's girdle, bound his own hands and feet, and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, you know, who shall, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle, and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. That was the Romans. Shall deliver him in the hands. So now this, this was the Holy Spirit revealing the pertinent knowledge to the church. Now that's what the Holy Spirit wants to do today. To reveal the pertinent knowledge. What's going to happen here? What's going to happen over there? And the very next one in the sea there says 1128. In those days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch and stood up one of them named Agabus and signified by the Spirit that there should come a great dearth throughout all the world which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. It did come to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. And so we find the Holy Spirit and, and, and a mighty surge of revelation from the conception of it and the birth of the church until this very moment. And in these days, there's going to be more. Now, now, I hope you get on to it. I hope many others get on to it. We're in that moment of divine revelation where the Holy Spirit is going to talk more to the church than he has ever talked before. The condition of the times of the end are foretold by the Holy Spirit. One of the magnificent illustrations of that is what Paul said in 1 Timothy 4 and 1. The Spirit speaketh expressly. That in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith. They shall give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now, 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 now that, that is an awful situation. And if you would think just for a moment, you'll see that we're living in the last days. That the Spirit is speaking expressly. These are the latter times. They have departed from the faith. You'd be amazed at the people in their cult that came right out of the denominations. Right straight out of the denominations. And, and, and to the cult. They should depart from the faith. They won't just backslide go out in the world. They will give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. 
And so there are many people in our land today that are under seducing or deceiving spirits and doctrines of devils. And they will speak lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Imagine, conscience seared with a hot iron. They have no more conscience of right and wrong and God and the Holy Ghost. It's been burned out of them. Forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received and thanksgiving of them that believe and know the truth. And they'll have all kinds of strange doctrines. And uh, from eating until everything else. All right. Now, the Holy Spirit reveals the future. Another way he has a revealing the future is by the gift of the word of God's wisdom. Uh, I think we're going to, uh, to deal with that, maybe, uh, in, 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 these, in these lessons on the Holy Spirit. The gift of the word of God's wisdom, you have to get the whole meaning there. It does not say the gift of wisdom. There is no gift of wisdom. It's a word. And so the Holy Spirit gives us a word of God's wisdom. Now, a word is a fraction. A word is a part of a whole. A word is a, is a revealed instrument of a hidden thing called a thought. And you can't tell what you're thinking, but when you speak, then we know what you're thinking. And so there will be a word of God's wisdom. We don't know the wisdom of God. And, and so the Holy Spirit gives us a word, not all of God's wisdom, a word of God's wisdom. And it is a revelation of the future, always. It is a revelation of the future. And so that's what the gift of the word of wisdom is. At the top of page 62, it says what the gift is not. The gift of the word of wisdom is not that a person is brilliant or that he has an academic su success in any given subject. And the gift has nothing to do with worldly wisdom at all, mental wisdom. It is a supernatural revelation, as I was just telling you, revealing the glory of God. It is a fragment of God's wisdom, as I was just telling you. A personal function of the word of wisdom and uh, I don't think maybe I should give you that. Just let you, just, just let you uh, read it there. Because uh, Brother Howard Carter, before we ever met, knew exactly what I would say when I arrived. And he knew this through the gift of the word of God's wisdom. Now, the word of wisdom and the gift of prophecy. And this is a clear distinction I want to make with us. Uh, a clear distinction must be formed in our minds regarding the simple inspirational gift of prophecy in the New Testament. And the word of wisdom. Uh, 1 Corinthians... Uh, 14 and 3 says, is the full measure and the blessings of the gift of prophecy. There's no revelation associated with it at all. In fact, we sometimes get the word prophet and the gift of prophecy mixed up. They, 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 a prophet himself is a person who has the gift of the word of wisdom, maybe the gift of the word of knowledge. A person. The gift of prophecy, the word of God tells us here in, uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 3, that there are three evidences of the gift of the uh, of the workings of prophecy and none of them have any relationship at all with the future any person speaking in the church foretelling the future has left the simple and the least of the gifts and has moved into the greatest and foremost of the gifts the prophet of the old testament or the new testament is a seer who sees the future and possesses the gift of the word of god's wisdom and not just a gift of prophecy now most cults are born because the church does not Utilize the gifts of God. I wish you'd underline that with your pen for me. Uh, th there would be no Christian scientists if the churches had taught healing, you see. They came into being because there was a, a vacuum. And there was emptiness. And the people needed healing. And the churches wasn't teaching it. Anytime you leave off a great truth, you're going to open a place for the devil to come in with an error and, and, and teach the people. And if we teach the fullness of God's truth, then you won't have the other. When we don't teach about the devil, then the devil moves in with all kinds of things like fortune tellers, crystal ball gazers, Ouija board players, tea leaf interpretations, and all kinds of paraphernalia, you see, because we haven't been taught. When we, when we teach, we enlighten people, and then they know the tricks of the devil, so they are not deceived. Our entire world realizes that we are now engulfed in the greatest ways of black magic, witchcraft the world has ever known. One reason is that the church is not operating in the gifts of the Spirit which are weapons of our warfare. If we were in operation, the devil's counterfeits would stop completely. Therefore, I challenge all of those that the major gifts of the Spirit shall flow through us and covet earnestly the best gifts, 1 Corinthians 12 and 31. Desire spiritual gifts, 1 Corinthians 14 and 1. And if we do that, we will walk in the Spirit, we will live in the Spirit, we will work in the Spirit, and the Spirit will be glorified through us, the person of the Holy Ghost. Father, we want to say thank you for the truths of God. They feed us. We flourish in them. We grow in them. We increase in them. And we want to know more about the one who gives them. The one who says, and I give gifts 
unto men. Lord, help us to know him better, to understand him better, and to walk close to him as he communicates what the Father desires and wishes in our lives. For your blessings upon everyone that hears and everyone that sees, we thank you. And may we all grow in the knowledge of God until we shall see Jesus face to face. And all the people said... <laughs>